So uh, my name is Justin Myers, like I mentioned, I'm from the University of North Carolina, so I thought I would put this up here because, you know, I mean, we were so close. You can see up here, we're up there, uh, we're kind of right next to Kansas right there. But uh, these are some of the teammates on the UNC basketball team, Armando, RJ, Leakey, and Brady. And I put this up for a couple reasons. Um, number one, to show that um, the section I'm talking about are actually the tools that we're going to use to teach people, right? There's a lot of different tools in your toolbox. One of them are the actual PowerPoint presentations. So we actually do encourage that you juice up the slides a little bit. You'll see when you get the slide deck, they're, they're very basic. Um, and they could definitely uh, put you to sleep. So we, we, we recommend juicing them up a little bit. But the thing is, you got to be very careful, just like you have to whenever you start beefing up slides, you definitely, as we've mentioned multiple times here, you have to know your audience. Um, for me, I love putting a little humor uh, in PowerPoint presentations when I'm talking to students. And the problem with humor is it's dangerous, right? And you can crash and burn. And I have crashed and burned on so many occasions. And um, sometimes you learn by that. But definitely when you're going to a new culture, you definitely have to be careful. So I, I started working in Kenya about uh, nine years ago, and the first couple of times that I did, did give talks, and I thought I was kind of being a little humorous, and I was met with, you know, just, just flat stares. I, I realized, yeah, you, 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 gotta, you have to know um, how it's handled there. Now, I, I've since gotten a little better with knowing the audience there, and on a recent BEC course, um, I put in some things that Travis said people laughed, so he, he told me that, that it was at least partially funny. But I kind of had a sense of what the medical students thought. You know, it's funny, they, they kind of appreciate some Hollywood references. Um, and so, you know, I was able to throw that in there. Secondly, I want to say that as a, a course, um, these are tools. And um, in a way, you know, you're, as, as a facilitator, as a leader, just say, is it, just let me know if this is too loud. I can, I can maybe shut that door. Um, but um, your, your job also is to, as a coach, um, is to provide instruction. Um, but that's not the only, only part of it. Because you, let's say a basketball team, for example, right? You can go up there and show everyone the plays. And you can say, this is how you play basketball. This is how you, and then be like, all right, let's go and do it. Let's go play this championship game. You know you can't do that, right? Like you, you, you need experiential learning. and so. Um, these tools, hopefully, with, um, with all the interactive scenarios, can really help people get some experiential learning. I know it's how I learn. I learn a little more kinesthetically uh, by getting my hands on, on things. And, you know, there are pluses and minuses to simulation type of learning, but I think it's really important, that, rep that repetition and using all the different tools in your toolbox. So here are a few of the tools. You have the workbook. It does come in electronic form. Um, which you can give to your participants, like here, is perfect. It may not be the best. You may need to have some budget to print these out. And um, we definitely print them out and you give these to the participants beforehand. Um, and then we'll go through, this is just a list of some of the things that we will we'll go through. Uh, I, I won't belabor it too much, but I do want to give you some familiarity with it. All right, so for example, this is in the actual uh, workbook that you give uh, to the participants. And this is on module two, approach to trauma. And you, you really want to emphasize before they come to class, so the whole flipped classroom experience, you want to emphasize that they need to work to fill this out beforehand. Inevitably, you're going to have folks that have not. And so that's OK when they get there and they realize, oh, some of their neighbors did fill it out. You know, they might frantically be filling that out throughout the time. And they probably have time to do it. But here's an example of these key terms. Because you're going to be introducing new vocabulary that for us, like at this point in our training, it's so second nature. It's like Travis said about how you're speaking very slowly. It's like if I was teaching you something on electrical engineering, you know, and I'm just throwing out terms, maybe for, for most of us, like it would mean nothing. So some of these terms, um, it's learning a new language. And so we recommend that they go through and they actually <coughs> write these out in their book. So we actually have it in their book. And here is the glossary. So all of it is there. It's very easy to access. It's very nicely laid out. They can just take from that and write on it. OK, and then throughout the uh, workbook, there 
are these little sections here uh, at the end of, uh, like a trauma section here. It gives them a sense of a time to like really apply what they're learning. So you have them do this beforehand, but then you want to actually go through this with the participants. And this is where you want to like um, get some engagement uh, with them. So for example, and it's again, this is all laid out very closely. So all right, so here's a, a middle-aged man brought in after being hit by a car, using a workbook section above, list the immediate management for assessment findings below. So it is very clear um, listed above. I'm gonna put Sean on the spot. I'm gonna say, all right, this is immediate management of this when their airway assessment is there's some gurgling airway sounds and obvious head trauma. It's just like one thing. Better position airway, that's fantastic. That's actually what you'll see written above. How, and what method would you do? Jaw thrust. Jaw, so you did great, jaw thrust. And because this, is, this says obvious head trauma, so we know that there could be a C-spine uh, injury, and now we're gonna do jaw thrust. So you really wanna take time, even if they've written this out, to talk about this, because that is a critical bit of information that you're, um, uh, imparting to them and to their, their assimilating into their, their knowledge base. All right, so there are, now what we're gonna do a little bit later are facilitator-led case scenarios. And here, again, if they've gone through and they fill this out, it'll make the case scenario section um, a little more of a breeze when we all get together. Okay, there are multiple choice questions after each section. Again, we want them to do it beforehand because it can take some time to think about it, think it through, but then you also want to go through it. And this is another great way in their small groups that you have someone, they take turns, someone reads a question, and then they answer, and they can talk about it, or maybe have some argument. Why, you know, why is it that you know, we're doing it this way, or I've seen it done another way? It's a really great way to sort of um, put that information within the context of what they know. Um, again, they may not have done this beforehand, so we encourage them to kind of make sure that you get this done, and you'll go through it again. That repetition is really going to be helpful. This is a hugely busy, busy slide, but this just shows that there are uh, procedures that we're going to go through in practice, and so it is very um, line by line laid out what we have them learn and to help guide you, so um, it's very uh, straightforward. Okay, so then there's these um, sections on like pitfalls, can't miss sections. These are good for you as facilitators to read through and to kind of like point, point out when you're in those sections. So I, I'm gonna get really close here, but like choking, if you find choking and coughing, you need to think of foreign body, right? So that's like something that, um, that's specific to an airway problem that they need to address immediately based on that history. So those are important. Um, and then there's just more of the, the same here. Um, okay, so there are these things called quick cards. Oh, yes. How much of this is like covered in the It's gonna look a lot nicer to be colored. I mean, you can do it without it. For sure you can do it. If you just look at this, like you don't need color printing, but um, it just makes it look it look classy, you know, when it's in, but yeah, you, if that's, you don't have it, it's, it'll still work. All right, um, throughout, in the workbook, you'll see these things called um, quick cards, and so this is Caleb Love, who was, who was quite a star in the um, recent championship, and he was really good at making quick shots right at the end, that's a real reach, right? Another thing about visual aids is you, they don't want them distracting, right? Like, this is almost, and this is a great group right here. You're like, they're literally, you're all like educated, global health educators. So like, this is like exactly down your alley, but you know, you, don't, you want lectures that, um, if you're gonna put a visual aid, that it supports what you're talking about, doesn't draw your attention too far away. Um, and you also want, it's also, I mean, this is up to debate, but it's good to have a theme as you go through, right? Like it's not just so much random, like little funny things that people are just not really sure. Um, so this is my basketball coaching theme throughout. Um, anyways, but 
Caleb Love uh, was good at making high pressure, quick decision shots. And that's what these quick cards are for. They can print these out and put them around their um, emergency department or wherever their emergency care center afterwards. You can make them pocket size so they can carry them around. So this is something that can help um, refresh. Because you know how much with learning here, how much you actually retain from something new. So this is going to be very important. And you can have these printed out even for them. And if you can get them laminated and have them throughout the course, and you can leave it with them. It's a really nice gift. All right. And there's the quick shot. That was, uh, look at that, 24 seconds left. He nailed this three-pointer. And then he went on to hit three of his last four, three, three for, I can't even say that, unique New York. He hit three of his uh, free throws and they went on to beat Duke, which was, you know, a really good part of the whole tournament, but. All right, so in addition to, um, we talked about the slides, we also have, we have a facilitator manual, which you, I don't know if you've all received yet, um, but this, uh, I'll show some, some screenshots of it in a second, but. Uh, this is like very granular, like, okay, put this slide on and this is what you say. So reading through that will really help. It'll give you a little bit of guidance. I'll, I'll, I'll show you the coordinator guide. Yeah, well, these are just some tools that you'll have there. Um, every uh, section has um, these learning objectives, which you obviously want to make sure that you hit. and. Um, but you also want to, at some point, talk about it with the uh, students. So these are a little long right here. I'll show you in a second. But this is ABCD. This is trauma. Um, I'll get back to that in a second. Here's the facilitator guide. This just shows, like, A, how you would prepare for um, the approach to trauma section, um, what you need, how much time it takes, the total lecture time, so that you can just really get your head around uh, what you need to prepare. Here is like I said, you have you, you have the objectives, you want to discuss the objectives. So all those objectives I put up, you do want to just talk through them. I think it will prepare their brain to kind of when they see it again, like, oh, there it is. And then at the end, you might hit it again. And then you have the slide for it. So all matches up. Okay. Right. This is like super high yield factoids that you'll find throughout the book. Remind participants that trauma patients can have very complex injuries and may be hidden and can worsen and die very quickly. It may be necessary to refer critically if your trauma patients to a higher level <coughs> of care or specialty treatment. It's kind of a thesis for the BEC course, but it's something that this facilitator guide will show you. That's sort of like a slam dunk statement. All right, I'm reaching a little far, but I just wanted to show uh, Brady doing that. So after we talk about the breathing module, we go through the breathing module, then we'll come back and this is where I might go up to a participant and say, at least, you, know, you don't have to answer, but say, tell me some signs of difficulty in breathing, like what you would see. And then, you know, they might say, oh, they're strider sounding or um, they're breathing very fast or something like that. And so you want to go through and get them just to reinforce what you've just learned. And then the same with shock, same with altered mental status. These are those big key four areas um, that we've talked about already. Okay, they do provide a suggested schedule, but as Shama even said, like this is just suggested. You probably don't want to go shorter than like five days, um, but hey, three months is what you need, that's great. You know, if you think about relating this to like an EMT <coughs> course uh, or in the US, like those typically are like four month courses. Um, and in a way, you could really get a lot of deeper learning that way because you're reinforcing concepts, you're um, having more time to go through the material. But if you want to get it done, this is a, a, a one way to do it. All right, so this is Coach Davis. And um, it's just to remind you that um, all of these tools are, are wonderful and they would hopefully help, but ultimately they are learning from you, right? And so your job as a coach is to motivate, is to inspire them, um, and uh, you know to um, facilitate their learning, uh, the which Coach Davis brought them to the championship. So, all right, any questions on the tools section?
right, guys. Um, so we're going to run through this pretty quickly. Um, this lecture is on how to give a lecture, which I'm sure all of you have given a lecture before. Um, this lecture is typically a little bit more helpful when you're doing this in country, um, maybe with trainers who are becoming facilitators who haven't done a lot of lecturing to folks. Um, but we'll run through this, and then afterwards we're going to break into some small groups and get to do some practice. Um, so the objectives are to understand the advantages and disadvantages of lectures, um, learn how to effectively deliver material, um, and then learn how to engage with your learners. Um, so the advantages, um, with lectures you can disseminate information to a large group of people. It's a very cost-effective way to do this. Um, it also allows for you to use a variety of media, so if you want to include videos like Justin did. Um, limitations, um, everyone has to go at the same pace. Um, or you have to slow down and go at the pace of your slowest learner. Um, and then, as we all know, especially I think being an EM, our attention spans are pretty short, and so it can be a little difficult to sit through lecture after lecture after lecture. Um, so, in preparing for your lectures, just plan, prepare, so you can give a good performance. Um, you'll want to talk about, um, set up your learning objectives, set up your key points, um, in order to try to engage people, um, make sure everyone is on the same page, um, you'll want to have specific questions prepared, and the BEC lectures do a really great job of that, and they actually have in the, um, in the slide decks that you'll get access to, um, there are question, like little question marks when they want you to ask specific questions to your learners. Um, include notes, and then just finish with summaries, make sure you ask if there are any questions at the end. So, be prepared. Um, and I think Liz and Travis and Justin have touched on a lot of this, but effective communication skills um, are really important, especially when you are giving presentations to individuals who um, might not have English as their first language, maybe you're conducting it in a different language. Um, make sure you're aware of like specific terms that are relevant to that country. Um, make sure that you talk slowly enough so that everyone can understand what you're saying. Um, because we all have our funny accents. Um, so use of voice, um, you wanna make sure you're projecting, you wanna make sure that you're avoiding all of those nervous tics, saying um a lot or er, um, which I'm probably doing right now. And then face the audience, make sure you're smiling, using good body language, try not to move around the room or pace too much. And if you are effective, hopefully your audience members will not fall asleep like this man. In order to engage your audience, you'll want to ask questions frequently. You can open that up to the whole room, or as you get to know people during your time with them over the course of the five days, you can call on people by name. Sometimes that can be effective, especially in contexts where people are a little bit more nervous to raise their hand and just speak up, which I think we encountered a little bit in Kenya um, we had some folks that were a little bit more nervous and some that were more outgoing, so it was helpful to kind of call people out, because um, I know that they knew the right answer, they were just a little bit hesitant. And you're gonna get answers that are both correct, partially correct, and then completely off base and incorrect. And I think in a lot of the contexts I've worked internationally, people are ridiculed or put down for having incorrect answers. And I think we really try to reframe that as, like, let's pick out part of the answer that is correct. Um, let's restate the question so that they can be guided more towards the correct answer. And then um, you don't want to ever criticize anyone. I think we all know that. When they're responding to you, make sure you're engaging with them. I think that's pretty straightforward. Make sure you're listening to what they're saying. And then when you're answering questions, you want to make sure you're giving a clear answer. You can always call on members of the audience to provide that answer because they're probably able to answer a lot of the questions that are more specific for that cultural or um, country context better than you are able to. And then repeat answers so that the whole group can hear them. A lot of times your participants will be soft-spoken, maybe a little bit shy, so make sure that that information is disseminated well to everyone else. And at the end, you'll want to make sure that you summarize everything, um, define your learning objectives, um, and this is just a summary of everything that we've talked about very briefly. 
So are there any questions or comments on how to give a lecture? I think this is pretty straightforward stuff. So now it's your turn, and uh, ahead of time I sent out a slide deck that has uh, options for about seven different lectures in there. The objective is to pick one of those. You don't have to have looked at it very closely ahead of time, but we're gonna break into groups of three groups of six and one group of five. So you might have to disseminate, like spread yourselves out a little bit more. A lot of you guys can come join us over at this table here. And we're going to spend, you'll have four minutes to give one of those lectures and then one minute for critique from the group. And I think this is a helpful um, exercise for us, but it will especially be a helpful exercise when you're doing this in country with your participants who have not given lectures before so they can practice. Any questions? So we can have six, 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 and then if I think we'll need three more people to join us over at this last table.